What's going on guys? Who's in a block back again? We are out here with the Mercury Cougar. And man, that engine bay looks good. The Raptor liner looks fresh. You see I got parts boxed up, ready to go back to the owner. But before we can send this thing away, we gotta finish up this interior. It is pouring rain outside. My apologies. I don't really control the weather. So if it's too loud in the background, I apologize. Hopefully, I'm not so loud in the camera that it's causing distortion. But anyway, we're gonna finish up this dashboard. I gotta paint the lower half of the dash. This upper portion gets a cap. So the dashboard's gonna get painted. The glove box, which is right here. So I gotta prep this glove box. Get all this flash rust off of here. There's a brand new steering column. We're gonna have to epoxy prime this and get it painted. We're not painting my tools, they're just on the bench because a bunch of other stuff going on as usual. Uh, let's see here, there's the ashtray. These floor plugs, I'm going to paint those. I was going to raptor line them, but to get a smooth transition and fitment, paint will be the best way to go on those. Sorry, junk out of the way, sorry. Got stuff everywhere, so we're going to paint those. And then on the rack, look at this rack. Look at the lineup, look at that, look at that. Can you see it with all the junk in the background? So this is a parking brake cable. These are all interior trim pieces. And that's the trunk latch, assembly. So all of these, all these parts will have to be painted. They're, they have all been bead blasted. So this is actually bead blasted down to the etching, which is awesome. I'm coming with some uh, epoxy primer and we'll prime all these up. <clears throat> And then once we get them primed up, we're going to paint them in a nice satin finished black. It'll be a two-stage process, so it'll be base coat, clear coat. We'll be using the Lesson All multi Matte Low Clear Gloss, or Clear Low Gloss. And we're using just above a flat, so it's a satin finish, not glossy, not semi-gloss. Kind of a matte satin, something like that. And the process will be this clear, the reducer, and then the associated, um, that, that reducer. And there's hardener up here somewhere. Oh yeah, hardener right there. So, that's the process on that. The paint bench is a mess because I've actually been mixing colors to figure out which black of the blacks we're going to use on the interior. Um, yeah. I think I mixed probably half a dozen black colors to talk with the owner, get the finish that he wanted, get the color that he wanted. So that's what all of this is. That's for you, Dave. So all this is from me mixing paints, trying to figure out what color black. And yeah, I think I'm gonna need a bigger paint bench. This was big enough when I first started, but I think I'm gonna need a bigger paint bench. And also I need to do some videos on these things because I get questions a lot. I've got some shorts about how to mix your paint and mix ratios but some people still have some confusion so i think i'm going to go through and do a long video on all these mix ratios how they work and this is why this is easy this stuff right here i'll tell you what a five to two to three mix ratio five to two to three let me show you what that looks like right quick all right so real quick since um We'll go ahead and cover this before I go do the prep work so I don't have to stop again. But a 5 to 2 to 3, which is the mix ratio, I'll pop that on the screen here. If you look at your paint cup, there's 1 to 2, or 1 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, 6 to 1, 8 to 1. And then you've got a bunch of measurements here and milliliters and ounces. There is no 5 to 2, 5 to 3, anything. Now you can use your five to one and double the ones, but then that just gets you the two part and then you still gotta do the three part. So, um, yeah, just in case you're curious, I have some cups I got from AliExpress which are different and they show you your four to one plus 10, 20, 30% and three to one and two to one and one to one and still no five to two to any, yeah. So we got the calculator out, or the blackboard, or the brown board, cardboard. Five to two to three is your mix ratio. Now, what I did is I multiplied, or I took 100 
milliliters, we'll just say that, as my standard number. So multiply that times 20. Multiply this times 20, you multiply that times 20. Now what you end up with is uh, 100, and then you would end up with 40, and then you would end up with 60. Which is pretty close as you can see, because actual mass shows 42 and 55. So that gets you in the ballpark. Now I did a several, I did several different ones because I was doing a five to two to three in a small capacity using five milliliters, which is, um, yeah. When I'm doing test panels, that's how small of amount of paint that I use for uh, like speed shapes. So that's where these numbers come from, and then. This is the, the 20, 8.4, and 11 parts. If you're using 20 milliliters, or if you're using 20 ounces, it'd be 8.4 ounces, 11 ounces. If you're using 33 ounces, you got a big cup, 33, 14, 8.3, or 18.3. But this is about the easiest way, so consider yourself that basically your 5 to 2 to 3 is really a 1 to 1, okay? If you had 1 to 1, except your 1 and your second one is divided. I don't know why they did this. This is what they did. This is how I figured it out. So if you ever have questions about mix ratios, this is why I'm doing a video about mix ratios. Because it gets very out of hand very quickly. So, sorry for that deviation. Let's get back to work on the Cougar. Oh, galvanized metal. Definitely use epoxy primer on that. And there's some little rust in there. I'm gonna have to get in there and clean that up. This mounts against the back of the car. You will never see this, ever, but I'm gonna clean it up. Oh yeah, did I miss the steering column? I think I did. I gotta build a stand for this so I can paint it actually, because I can't paint it on the ground. And I thought about hanging it up, but it is super heavy and I don't wanna take a chance on it splatting on the ground and ruining the column and denting it up and then, yeah. So, I'm gonna clean this table off and then we'll get this thing on a stand and I gotta hang that. And the, yeah, yeah. All right, I, I, I'm get, I'm getting to work. Getting to work. talk about prep work just when you think it's ready to paint it's like oh man i gotta get this little spot and that little spot so this is a fuel tank from aeromotive yeah got an aeromotive fuel tank here and it was damaged i guess in shipping or something so i am repriming this section right here and there's another area over here on the lip where it's a little wrinkled i straightened it out i gotta reprime that same on the bottom side and I think that was it as far as the tank's concerned. And then it will get painted. I got all these wax and grease removed and prepped. So all these hanging up here on this rack. Kind of hard to see with all the stuff in the background. But yeah, everything on this rack's ready to go. Ashtray's ready to go. This steering column. This is an I did it. And I'm going to just go ahead and tell you. Very nice column, very nice product. If your interior is black, get you one that's black. If you want it painted to match your interior and you go with some custom color, just be prepared to get it painted and the additional labor that it will take in order to do it right. Now, there are videos out there in which guys paint these things, hanging them vertically 
fully assembled. They just tape off the shift mechanism or whatever. And they're good with that. Now, one thing I'm going to show you right here. Now, you see I've got this column partially disassembled. There's the turn signal cam up here. And I've got it pulled back. Pulled the pigtail out some in order to pull the turn signal cam out far enough to disassemble the steering column far enough to expose this ring, which is right here. That ring is fully exposed when your steering wheel is either up or down. This lip right here goes all the way to that edge. So when you do not disassemble this column, there is no way you will fully be able to paint that part. You can shadow paint it or ghost paint it and it will be close, but it will not be fully painted. That's why I took this column apart. It is an additional hour or two of labor disassembly reassembly for the column but if you want it to be complete that's just what you got to do now i've seen other videos i looked at it and i said well i can see what they're doing but as soon as you get in that vehicle and pop that column down you have a ghost line or a shadow line where your paint just won't reach all the way around there and get you a nice clean wrap around so in this case i've got enough room where when i come around the column and i'll pan the camera around so you can see I can get every nook of that piece. So I got it out just enough to make sure I can get full coverage on all of that. So when you put it back together, you don't have to worry about any shadowing. That's why I say get you one that's painted or chrome. Because if you don't want to deal with that, now granted, you can do it however you want to. But if those little things like, oh man, that steering column is brand new and it's painted right to that point and there's a shadow and it's either not painted or the clear is inconsistent or the finish is inconsistent. And that's why it's because they didn't pull the column apart to make sure that this piece is out far enough so you can get paint all the way to the edge. All right, enough of my ranting about the steering column. Glove box is prepped, it's ready. Gonna prime that, gonna prime these floor plugs. And over here at the vehicle, I thought that I would be able to just scuff it down, but I ended up using my three inch DA, which is over there, with an interface pad, which, let's see, yeah. That's the interface pad up there at the end. So I did that because there were some areas where there was bare metal. I initially was just going to scuff this down because it was an older acrylic enamel that hadn't had any UV exposure. So you could really prime over that and paint it. But I went ahead and scuffed everything down with a good scratch. I did 180 with the interface pad on the DA. I'm going to go through and epoxy prime all of this lower section of the dash. So that way... When we go to do our paint, it looks flawless. Now the Mercury Cougar, and I think the Ford Mustang's the same, only the lower portion of the pa lower portion of the dash paints. The upper portion is a cover of some sort. So that's why when you see me working, I'm only working from like this area wrapping down to around the bottom. So I think that that covers everything. The gas tank is painting at the same time the interior is painting. No, the finish for the engine bay and the interior is the same. So that's why you've seen all that painted at one time and finished at one time. All right, enough of me yakking. I'm going to get over to the bench. I'm going to be putting the... I've got some epoxy primer that I had here. I think I may have a little bit of speedy coat epoxy primer left. May have a little bit left. Probably need that too. Um, I'll be spraying probably 200 milliliters of primer yeah 200 milliliters right there on the cup so we'll be spraying about that much of the primer and that'll be enough to coat the areas i need to fix on the gas tank those small trim pieces and the dash that should be plenty transfer it over to the gun i get you about in there somewhere about halfway half a cup half a standard size cup i think this is a 400 milliliter cup no it's a six yeah 600 milliliters. so about half a third to halfway up the cup that should be plenty of primer and i think we're going to go with gray so that's what I've got here on the bench. And then we'll go with black over top of the gray. And I'll probably use the R500 provided it's still alive and kicking. I have really been putting this gun through the ringer with base coat, clear coat, primers, all kinds of stuff. And I thought that I was having a problem. But it turns out that I just didn't clean the gun good at some point in time through one of the many you know, like right here, I got black inside the spray cup. I didn't get that out, so I'll clean that up real quick. But, um, yeah, it was a, a misclean, which happens a lot when you start and stop, especially when you, you know, have a family and 
here in the middle of finishing up or almost finished up and something happens and you got to run inside the house um anyway we're going to use r500 for this primer and probably for the base coat and probably for the clear coat if i don't use the r500 for the clear i'll use the gun i used previously which was either i really like this little mini triple eight um i think i may have killed it too i think it's a dry clear coat in it unfortunately but um yeah so it'll be this one that one or uh, yes the old N30 I was having problems with air coming back up in the fluid cup with this which I think it's because my seal is missing there's a seal that goes around the spray cap it's down here um, yeah probably fell off on the bench somewhere do you see it I know I don't so that means you know what's gonna happen I'm gonna get old reliable out which is somewhere oh yeah right there Y'all know what that is. That's the Mark I Refinish Pro. So when all else fails, I just get the Mark I because it's as reliable as a Chevrolet before the 4L60E. All right, let me get this stuff mixed up in the gun. We'll get it on these parts, and then we'll get some paint on. All right, so for my mix ratio, this is a one-to-one -one primer. It's one part primer, one part catalyst. I was running low on my catalyst, so I dumped my catalyst in first, actually. Still math the same. So I ended up with 200 milliliters and I added 20%. So I'm about 250 here on the cup. Now, this is my, my little trick for mixing up the paints and reducers and primers and all that stuff. So 1001, 1002, 1003. So about a three second drip off the stick will flow through a 1.3 tip gun. So for those who ask, how do you get that primer to flow so smooth? That's how. Reduce it down until you get about that kind of a flow. And that works for me. You know, you can follow the TDS sheet, and I have. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It all depends on your gun, pressure you're shooting at. All those things are a factor. Use the two to three second drip rule, and it works 98% of the time. With everything except for that lacquer primer stuff that we saw in another video. But anyway. As far as the 2Ks and the epoxies and all that stuff, this is some old stuff. I just got to get that off the bench. But as far as that's concerned, that's how I do it. So, three-second drip. And always, 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 whenever you are putting your primer or paint or clear, whatever it is in the gun, you, use a filter. You can use one of the, one of these right here. It's good. I've got some other ones up here on the shelf. You see there, I got those. So, I'm not biased. Those are Harbor Freight. Those are PPG. This is OG. No name at all. But put that on your gun and you see down in there i have another filter down the gun um so i filter and then i have a so i got a pre-filter and a post filter to make sure that i don't get any junk down at the tip and clog the gun so make sure you got your your funnel or your filter for your gun there and i don't know if i've ever actually used this before like this we're going to try it on camera and see how terrible it works out you can pour your primer through your upper filter. Oh, it's working okay. Into your gun, like so. And you can see there are some chunks up there. See that one that came through? And those will get caught in the filter, which is why you always use a filter. So sometimes you have some solid content. It just doesn't want to cooperate. You don't want that in your gun. So looking down in the filter, you can see those little solids there. So they're up there in the filter, not affecting your paint, which is what you want, which is awesome. Because they get in your paint cup, it can be a very, very bad day. You get weird spray patterns and splatters and no sprays, and then you're very sad because you got to start over. And sand down what you just put on. Which granted, we all have to sand some stuff down. But you don't want to sand everything down. Alright, that's looking good. I'm going to see if I can find a lid. There's one I think will work. Oh yeah, that'll work. Alright, let's set the camera down. Let's get some primer on. Now my most important piece to prime is that steering column. Because it is raw steel. So it's got to have primer on it. So anything that's raw steel, you definitely want to make sure you get primer on in a holistically solid way. If you got something that's etched... Epoxy primer is a great idea. You can also use a 2K, but in this case, I'm going to use epoxy primer on everything because I do have bare metal showing through in the actual body of the car where the dash is at. 
I got bare metal over here on this column. I got bare metal over there on the fuel tank. There's some bare metal on one piece hanging down at the very end of this rack over here to the left. And then these floor plugs are galvanized. So they've been scuffed up and they're also going to get epoxy primer. You won't see those because I'm not moving the camera around. I got too much work to do to be playing cameraman at the same time that I'm painting. So sorry. Sorry for you. All right. I just got primer on my camera. This is why I try not to move the camera. And I guess I'm about to strap one to my forehead or something. Anyway, all right, let me get to spraying. Epoxy primer is on, flashed up, all my pieces here, primed up, ashtray, steering column, glove box, that's everything there, got the little spot over here on the gas tank taken care of, we're going to go ahead and spray this up, so I'm going to wash and grease remove this right quick, and I think it's already been scuffed, so we should be ready to go ahead and apply our paint to this, I may run the scots right over one more time, and then over here on the bench, we went with some of this wonderful acrylic urethane, got it mixed up in the gun. It's a two to one to one, so two parts paint, one part reducer, I'm sorry, four part, it's a four to two to one, so four parts paint, two parts reducer, and then one part uh, base coat, urethane activator, something like that, so that's what we got in the gun, that's what I had left. I had some other blacks, but they had other stuff in them, so we just went with straight black because that's what the owner wanted, was black. So black it is. All right, with that said, I'm gonna put the camera down and do a little prep on the fuel tank, and then we are gonna go ahead and lay this black. All right, we got everything ready. Got my separation there in the steering column so I can get the black all the way around. Got everything hung up on the rack. Got the aeromotive fuel cell, fuel tank, hanging up on the rack over here. I went in, I took the sending unit loose just enough to get paint all the way around there another one of those things like i was telling you before you could tape around that and just paint it but then if you look down in the tank you'll see that there are areas that wouldn't have paint around it so so i'm fully taped everywhere got it ready to go now it's my favorite time laying it down all this prep work for the paint work So here's the deal. I'll go ahead and show you guys what's going on. Definitely going to color sand this. It had some trash that landed in it when I was spraying. Little bits and dust nibs. That actually didn't land in it when I was spraying. I sprayed this first and I was spraying these pieces over here. And I just dried base coat and some stuff. So we're going to sand that down. I rolled this column over because I wasn't sure I had complete coverage on the bottom and I did not. You can see the good coverage here and it gets kind of shaky right in that area there so we're gonna dust some more base coat on here and kind of even that out everything else look good there 
this I could probably go ahead and just hit with the flat clear, but you can see it's got some little nibs in it. So we're going to go ahead and color sand that. And the tank had a couple sags where I was working my way around the sending unit. There's one there, and there's one right there. So I got to sand those out. This tank has a lot of texture in it, which I'm not going to actually take out. I think that's fine as it is because the trunk is Raptor liner. So I don't want to get the tank too slick. I gotta get those out. And then there's a little area at the very bottom where I didn't get enough base coat. So typically I would hang this thing up, but my rack is full and yeah, I can't tilt this rack because if I tilt the rack, then the tank is closer to the rack. And if I put it on the other side of the rack, then it's closer to the floor. So I'm working with what I've got. Probably could have hung it from the rafters, but that's a long way up. All right, so that's the story on those. Uh, this piece, I'm about to put some matte clear on, and then these other pieces are all going to require some sanding or a little bit of primer. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, sanding or a little bit of base. So this piece was the only one that was ready to go, but there's actually a small faint shadow on this part. Oh, no, I'm sorry, this part has uh, a couple sags. Got to get those out. Um, there's a small faint shadow right there on the wire where I didn't get enough base coat in. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's the only reason this one's not getting done. Otherwise, this would be the only piece ready to clear. The rest have miscellaneous issues. All very small, but they need to be dealt with. Uh, this one had a little bit of shadowing. I didn't get enough base coat on the back here around that edge. It's the only piece I didn't spray on the back side. For whatever reason, I just missed that one. Uh, this one looks pretty slick, but there's a sag in the base coat right there. And that one, uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, there's a little sag right down there. Gotta get that one out. Now, part of the reason for all these sags, the tip of that I don't have this issue, is um, probably should have done. I mean, I hung these up, which is kind of how you do this. It's how I've seen it done, but they move. So I had my hand behind there and I'm holding it with the gun, trying to trace my angle down. And if they moved out, I'm trying to chase it over, you know, following the motion as you can see here with the camera when it's moving. Inevitably, you're gonna have some inconsistency in spray. That's what I had. That's where the issue came from. Uh, this piece would have been ready, but I just missed an area. I just saw right in there. Look at that. Now, this installs face down. So, you actually won't ever see that. I think those two bolts bolt to the firewall. I don't know. Maybe I should just go ahead and spray it. But there's a little faint area right there. If you look under the dash, you can see it's not painted. Ha! <laughs> yeah, I'm going to fix that. Alright, so yeah, that covers the column and the glove box and the ashtray. Now the dash actually came out flawless. All those contours and not a single sag anywhere in the paint. So we're going to go ahead and get the mat clear on the dash and that one bracket over there for the trunk. And then we'll color sand everything else. So let me set the camera down. Let's go ahead and get the mat clear on here. I've got it already mixed up. It's the 5 to 2 to 3 crazy ratio. And let's get it done. And everything in base. This is great. Now, traditionally, a lot of this stuff is shot in a single stage, but we'll have to apply our clear coat. All this came out pretty good. I'll let this flash up. Probably going to retouch this glove box. Got some trash in there. I don't have my big fan on because it's kind of cold outside. And that is going to have to be sanded out. Yep, going to sand that out of there. That's all right. We'll let it flash up and I'll sand that out of there. And then. Uh, I think that will respray. I'm going to do a little bit of work on the column. It actually looks like it came out pretty good. There was one little sag on one of these little teeny tiny pieces of trim. Oh yeah, right there. So I'm going to have to hand sand that section out and fix that one piece. Other than that, the rest of these came out pretty good. Yep, came out pretty good. Yeah, boy. 
Oh, this is going to be matte black, but it has that base coat on it first. So that's why we got it with the base black, and then we will go from there getting everything sorted out. So, yippee, skippy, yippee. That's the parking brake cable pull assembly, I believe. Fuel tank came out good. Got everything I need to get covered there. All smart parts. Minus the glove box, pretty much flawless. And that one little piece of trim there. Ashtray. I think it's good enough. I may hit that one. Hit the glove box one more time. Uh, the dash, yeah, that came out slick. Oh yeah, that's nice. I'm go check the other side. Don't want any haters saying you only show one side of the dash three wheels. There we go. Oh yeah, nice and slick. That's gonna look real good. Well, my camera battery died. I didn't catch what happened when I was shooting the clear. But it looks like it laid out pretty good. I don't see any sags. Oh crap, there's a sag. Dang it. Son of a gun. Got a little overzealous right there. Man, one day we'll get it perfect the first time. Just not today. That piece is flattening out really well. That's good. And I went ahead and hit the back of this one and the back of that one. And I did hit the. Oh, that cleaned up really nicely, actually. Wow. Did hit that. And I hit the glove box door, which I will sand back down. But we're going to see how it flashes out. And my light on my gun, I think the batteries were dying because I just realized I've got a sag right there. I did not see that when I was in there. Probably just got a little too close, a little too much product on there. The contours are tricky. I'll sand that one out. We'll touch it up a little bit. This side over here looks good. Looks good. I don't see any craziness here so i'll take that as a victory yeah i turned out good all right we'll let this flash up and then we will get back on it with uh, a little bit of 800 over there where that little sag was at right there and then i'll touch all those on that rack over there touch this guy i'm gonna color sand this down probably with a 800 on a da or by hand. I think that one's fine. Add some base coat to the steering column and a little base coat to the bottom of here and we'll sand up the couple areas we talked about and then we will be ready to dust some more base coat on these small parts and then hit that with some clear, hit all these with some clear and this the column, all the small parts and then that will wrap it up. So I'm gonna let this cure up and then We'll get back out here and do a little bit of color sanding, as they call it, and get ready to put on a little base and our final matte clear.